Hi everyone. How many of you here today have ever eaten an insect before? This is very impressive. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I make insect food, and for those of you who haven't, we have our cricket chips at the SoCap Marketplace, if you're curious. Um, but a lot of people, when they hear what I do, they think I'm one of those new age kids who rides around on a bike, this is my co-founder actually, um, and with a sticker on the back that says, arms are for hugging and drinks kombucha and eats kale, and then Instagrams it, hashtag organic. Um, but that's not at all who I was or the path that I was on. In fact, I'm from Nashville and I grew up on fried chicken and mashed potatoes and gravy. Um, and I'm also one of your very traditional overachievers. I had straight A's in school, I went to Harvard, I wanted one of those fancy jobs where I knew where my next paycheck was coming from and I could stay at the Four Seasons if I traveled, although the hostel here is pretty nice. Um, and that's what I thought I wanted. But then something happened that completely put me on a new course where I actually don't know where my next paycheck is coming from. Um, I was in Beijing two years ago and um, I was dared to eat a fried, oh, that's my overachiever, but I was dared to eat a fried scorpion. Um, and the first thought that came into my mind was fear. What if it's disgusting? What if I die? I mean, these are very valid fears. Um, but I couldn't back down from the dare, so I closed my eyes and put it in my mouth. And my first thought is, this tastes like shrimp. And um, that's really interesting because actually insects and crustacean are very closely related. Um, and a week later, my co-founder sent me an article about why the world should be eating insects. It's actually a UN and FAO report. And in there, we found that insect, insects are one of the most sustainable protein sources available. For example, it takes 2,000 gallons of water to make a pound of beef, but only one gallon of water to make a pound of crickets. But not only that, crickets are really healthy. So they have twice the protein and half the fat of beef for the same amount of meat, and it's a complete animal protein. So basically, all of this is to say that the world would be a better place if we ate insects. So we thought, okay, maybe we could try to replicate our Beijing experience here in the US. Um, so we went to the local pet shop and bought some crickets, mealworms, and waxworms, and fried them up and tried to feed them to our friends. Exactly. <laughs> People were freaked out, um, which is valid. So we're like, okay, that's fine. Let's try something else. So we actually ground up the bugs, um, so it actually looked like ground meat. Um, and we made these mealworm tacos. These are actually ours. And we brought it to the Harvard Innovation Lab for our first ever pitch competition. And we were the last to go, so we put it in the fridge. We made about 50 of these. Come back two hours later, and there were only five left because we forgot to label them and people thought they were beef tacos, which was great because people love the taste of them. We were really excited. We were like, okay, let's give it to the judges. They'll want to eat them. And so we gave it to the judges and they looked at us like, what? We're not eating mealworms. And that was a good lesson for us because even though we ground up the bugs and you couldn't really tell what it was, it still wasn't distant enough in form factor. And that's how we landed on cricket flour, which is crickets dried and milled into a powder. And we decided to put it into people's favorite foods, like chips. Um, these are our chips, or we call them chirps. And <laughs> we also like the bug puns. And we found it really amazing. While only 20% of people would try our mealworm tacos, almost everyone wanted to try chirps. And actually, there are a recent study by ETH Zurich and Peking University had the same finding about the psychology of eating insects, which is that people are much more likely to eat, or Westerners are much more likely to eat insects when it's put into their familiar foods. And so we think that our friends really wish that we you know, read it before we fed them the whole crickets, but that's okay. You live and you learn. Um, and so then something was happening. My co-founder and I, we were cooking bugs in the kitchen and every single time we were doing it, we were facing that initial fear of eating insects. And nothing bad was happening. So we were becoming more and more familiar and comfortable with this idea of eating insects and eventually stopped being scared. And in psychology, they call this exposure therapy. So we really wanted to try to do the same thing. But we were at crossroads because people were still not changing, right? We were facing our personal fears, but the outside world wasn't. And we thought we were going to lose to theirs. But we had an idea that we were really passionate about and we thought that could change food's impact on climate change. 
but it was an idea that people were scared of. I mean, who does that, right? Like, give me money, I'm gonna freak you out. Like, that's so weird. Um, and then the second thing is that, what if this idea was as crazy as it seemed? I remember the first time that we pitched to an investor, this is when we first started, and we said, you know, we wanna make food with insects. And he just looked at us and he said, well, I've been an investor for 10 years, and this is the worst idea I've ever heard. So, you know, we didn't, <laughs> we didn't really know where to go from there. Um, but it was at this time that one of our advisors told us, he was like, you know, you can't really give up on something just out of fear of failure. Yes, okay, maybe you are crazy, but there are a lot of other crazy people out there, so go find them and ask them what they think. So we did. We launched a Kickstarter campaign. Oh, I just don't know my slides. We launched a Kickstarter, camp we launched a Kickstarter campaign where we wanted to raise $30,000, um, and we raised $70,000 over 30 days with over 1,300 backers. And that makes us one of the most funded food Kickstarters ever. So we were getting a really positive response. But even more than that, Yahoo caught wind of our Kickstarter campaign, and they published an article about us, and it got so much traffic, it landed on their front page. And at the end, they asked, would you meet, eat chips made with bugs in them? They got the wrong bug, but it's okay. Um, and over 13,000 people responded, and 51% of people said yes, which is more than people win elections with. So we were really happy with that. <laughs> and so from there, we thought, okay, we can really, we can make something of this. And so slowly, every day, we put one foot out the door, waiting for the door to slam. But the door just kept opening wider and wider until we really just walked through the door and became what we call full-time bug and towpreneurs. Um, and now we're selling online and in stores. And what we discovered is that really, you know, there's no way that we can control what's happening with the you know, what people's fears that they have now, but what we can do is think about, okay, how can we make a positive change and how can we lead by example? And so every, every day, um, you know, there's people have fears and I know that I live with fear all the time, but I can't, con I can't, con I can choose whether or not that fear controls me or if I control that fear. And so every single day, we get to feed people bugs. And you know, I get to see their face go from being really scared to them being really curious. And then this spark of, oh my god, I just completely blew my own mind to come over their face. And it's this most amazing feeling because just for that second, we realize that anything, even eating bugs, is possible. And so that's really what we're about. And so we want everyone to eat bugs, spread the buzz, bug appetite.